Hello everyone, in this video, we'll explore how the thyroid works, its roles in the body, the symptoms of thyroid dysfunction, and of course the possible treatments. Stay with us to learn more. According to some studies, thyroid disorders affect up to 10% of the population. Thyroid nodules are found in more than 50% of women over 50 and are two to three times more common in women than in men. Thyroid conditions can appear early, sometimes as early as puberty. What is the thyroid? The thyroid is the largest endocrine gland in the human body. Located in front of the trachea and larynx, it has a distinct shape often compared to a butterfly or a capital H. It consists of two lateral lobes connected by a narrow central part, called the thyroid isthmus. Beyond its anatomical features, the thyroid plays a crucial role in the body's homeostasis, meaning it helps maintain balance through the secretion of hormones like T3 and T4. In fact, the thyroid gland primarily produces T4, which is then converted into T3 in other organs, particularly the liver. The regulation of this hormone production is controlled by the pituitary gland, an endocrine gland located beneath the brain, which secretes TSH thyroid-stimulating hormone that acts on the thyroid. The pituitary gland is, in turn, regulated by the hypothalamus through the secretion of TRH thyrotropin-releasing hormone. What are the roles of the thyroid? The thyroid plays several essential roles in the proper functioning of the human body. It is involved in fat and sugar metabolism, as well as in bone tissue remodeling and density. It also contributes to the maturation of the nervous system, the proper functioning of the reproductive system, and modulates cardiac activity. Additionally, it affects skeletal muscles by playing a role in the synthesis of myosin, a crucial molecule. Smooth muscles, such as those involved in intestinal motility, are also influenced. In summary, the thyroid impacts many anatomical structures throughout the body. What are the symptoms of thyroid dysfunction? Thyroid dysfunction can lead to a variety of issues due to the numerous functions of thyroid hormones. There are two main scenarios. Hypothyroidism, where the thyroid gland does not produce enough hormones. Symptoms of hypothyroidism include general metabolic slowdown and associated psychological disorders, such as physical and mental fatigue, depressive syndrome, constipation, bradycardia, slow heart rate, edema swelling, weight gain, muscle cramps, pain, and stiffness, hypothermia, low body temperature, dry skin and hair thinning. Hypothyroidism can have several causes. It may result from a direct malfunction of the thyroid gland or from an issue with the thyroid-stimulating hormone TSH produced by the pituitary gland. In most cases, it is due to an autoimmune disorder where the immune system attacks thyroid cells, indirectly reducing hormone production. This is seen in autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Hypothyroidism can also occur as a secondary effect after treatment for hyperthyroidism, after radiotherapy, be congenital, or, more rarely, result from iodine deficiency. Hyperthyroidism, on the other hand, occurs when the thyroid gland produces an excess of hormones. Symptoms often include tachycardia or rapid heart rate, palpitations, chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, sleep disturbances, mood disorders and irritability, rapid weight loss, chronic diarrhea, muscle weakness, cramps, tremors, excessive sweating, protruding eyes, exophthalmos. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism is also autoimmune, but it works differently from hypothyroidism. In hyperthyroidism, antibodies bind to thyroid TSH receptors and act as agonists, stimulating the gland's activity, leading to conditions like Graves' disease. Another frequent cause is the presence of overactive nodules in the thyroid. When there is a single nodule, it is referred to as a toxic adenoma, 
and when there are multiple, it is called toxic multinodular goiter. Other secondary causes can include medication effects or hormonal changes after childbirth. Diagnosis and treatment of thyroid dysfunction. When a patient presents with the symptoms mentioned earlier, a diagnosis is typically pursued. The physician conducts a clinical examination, which includes a detailed medical history and palpation of the thyroid to check for nodules or goiter. Additional tests, such as T4 and TSH measurements, are performed to confirm the diagnosis. In cases of hyperthyroidism, low TSH and elevated T4 levels are usually observed, while the opposite is seen in hypothyroidism. Antibody tests are also carried out to identify any autoimmune origins. Imaging studies, such as ultrasound and scintigraphy, may be performed to assess the thyroid's condition and iodine uptake. If a suspicious cyst is detected, the doctor may recommend a fine needle aspiration and cytopathological analysis. This involves taking a sample from the cyst using a fine needle, which is then examined under a microscope. Treatment options. The goal of treatment is to improve the patient's quality of life by rebalancing hormone levels, often requiring regular monitoring to adjust medication dosages according to individual needs. For hypothyroidism, synthetic thyroid hormones like levothyroxine E4 are prescribed. In hyperthyroidism, synthetic antithyroid medications are generally used. The aim here is not to treat the underlying cause, but to block the antibody's target and reduce thyroid stimulation. Symptomatic treatment may also be necessary, such as beta blockers for heart overactivity or anxiolytics for anxiety disorders. It is important to note that antithyroid drugs can successfully treat more than 50% of Graves' disease cases. Other treatments, such as radioactive iodine, I-131, may be prescribed for toxic adenomas, toxic multinodular goiters, or thyroid cancer. In some cases, surgery may be necessary in the form of either a partial or total thyroidectomy, depending on whether part or all of the thyroid gland needs to be removed. For cancerous tumors, each type of cancer requires specific treatment based on the type of cells involved, the stage of the disease, its impact on the patient, and the therapeutic goals set. Thank you for watching this video on thyroid disorders. I hope it has helped you better understand the importance of this gland and the various health issues that can be related to it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. See you soon!